man, you just get to meet all kinds of new people. It's been it's been nuts. And like how I met you, I actually got on Instagram and started searching just the Myrtle Beach hashtag, mm. and saw your the the picture of your hat. My hat, okay, yeah, yeah. That's what did it for me. And so. <laughs> I reached out, set up an appointment, come in and taught, and then, you know, but I just love, you know, people's stories of what they're doing, how they got there. When I, I do a lot of speaking at schools, and I'm big on alternative careers. I don't think kids have to go to college for four years. That shouldn't be the focus. Focus should be helping kids find careers that work for them. And um, I think kind of barbering, not only is the culture cool, but I think that's something else that could could – assist kids that were not going to go to college, right? It, oh, it, it's something that, I mean, like, how did you get started in cutting hair? I started cutting hair uh, when I was 12. My barber died, and um, I have trust issues when it comes to cutting all three strands of hair on top of my head. <laughs> so uh, I bought a pair of clippers with the money my mom sent me to the grocery store with, and she wore my hind tail out, but it launched a career. So <laughs> that's how I got started with it, and did you yeah. ever do, get any formal training, or was it just yes. – oh, so you did? Yes, 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 yes. So you went um, to – After the military, I did the military work, like right after high school and then got out and got my degree in nursing, and I worked at St. Jude for three and a half years. And oh, wow. realized that that was uh, one of the best jobs I ever had, one of the hardest jobs I ever had as well, and um, just wanted to do something different. And I was riding down the street in Memphis, and – it's a rough day, lost some patience, whatnot, and uh, looked to my right and to my left. There were two schools. There was a beauty school on my right hand side and my left, and there was a train coming. So I went to the one on the right, and that's all she wrote. Isn't that crazy how the <laughs> forks in the road of life? Yep. Well, there's a train coming, so I'm going to go to this one, and yep. then that's <laughs> wow. So the St. Jude's, it's got to be tough, man, with suit like terminally ill kids yes. working with them. Yes. So you went to school to be a nurse. Yes. Did that and what? So is it just you didn't enjoy it, or was it the the emotional? But why? Because you have to have a sense of disconnect. Like you can't personalize everything, and you have to take that home. And I lack that ability, which is probably one of my best things because, like, I take home everything. Yeah, I pray over everybody all the time, and you, I can't separate that. When you watch an eight month old pass away, how yeah. can you move on to the next person? It's something. <laughs> it's it's extremely selfless, and you know, like my mother has worked in. She's a nurse as well and has worked in nursing homes and stuff her whole life. I couldn't stand it. Like, she used to make my brother and I call the people in a nursing home at Christmas, and I act like we were their kids. Mm -hmm. Like, she would be like, you're going to call Miss Betty, and, and you're Bobby and Robert or, you know, whatever the names are, and you're her kids. Then we get on there, we talk to these people that had dementia or what. They had no idea. It made their day. I could not stand it. But that's the kind of person it takes, I believe, to be in that field. Mm -hmm. And, you know, where I deal with police and fire and stuff every day, same thing. They got to be able to shut it off and, and not let it, let it come home. So I could definitely see where if you didn't have that ability, if it's just not innate in you. Yeah, you couldn't do it. I personalize everything. Anybody like I'm a bleeding heart, so too, any man. kind of story I hear is just like I'm taking that home. I might not sleep over it. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And you have enough nights of that losing sleep. You're just like, there's got to be something else better out yeah. there for me. So after getting my beauty license and everything, I still continue to work with the kids. I'd volunteer there. I'd make wigs for some of the girls. We end up hosting a prom there for them and stuff. So I didn't discontinue my affiliation with right. them. I just had to transfer how I affiliated right. with them. Right. Because that, that that suits you better, right? Yep. I mean, you. wow. That's crazy. See, that's just what I love about doing this, man, is I just feel you've been cutting hair since 12 years <laughs> old. And So how old were you when you went to 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 beauty school? I was 21. Okay. 2006. Yeah, I was 21. So you go through that and you were where? Milwaukee? Uh, started off uh, in Milwaukee Mi and then Memphis. And then went down to Memphis. Okay. Yes. And so, with like, I'm watching your Instagram and I was telling somebody today, I'm like, man, you need a fade hook up. <laughs> this is your guy. Like, I mean, it's, it's weird to me. Like, even with tattoos, I tell people, like, I'm covered in tattoos, you know, my torso, and they'll ask for advice, and I'm like, number one, you need to find an artist, and I don't trust people that I can walk in and sit down with. Right, right. Right. <laughs> I, I want, yeah. So when I found you, and it's like, appointments only, I'm like, this is my guy right here. If he's busy enough that it's appointments only, man, that that's what I'm looking for. 
you, you and I had talked a little bit last week and you'd mentioned, I'd ask about kind of the, the barbershop culture and the tattoo culture and how you could travel and do guest spots and tattooing. And you were filling me in on how you can do that too with, with so barber yeah. and how you traveled around. Like it yeah. looks amazing to me if I was a 21 year old guy with, you know, no, no kids or any, you know, no, don't have to be an adult yet. Right. Just right. go travel the country. So with that, um, after finishing up beauty school, I got a few assistantships with the Paul Mitchell company, and that took me across the country and got the to tour underneath a bunch of great folks, Kelly Cardenas, Robert Cromine Salon, um, basically because it was just me and my dog. I'm a walking country song. Everything is going to involve my dog. <laughs> so, uh, uh, But just tour the country, had no real bills yet or anything, and I'm a nomad by nature, so I'll pack up and go. You want me to be in Texas tomorrow? I got you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just make it make sense for me, though. Yeah, but, well, and, and for me, you know, like this, I want to do this all over the country. Like, I want to take this. I want to I want to go meet new people. And for me, starting over is easy. I've started over my whole life. Leaving the comfort of being 43 or whatever, that's scary. But the starting over doesn't bother me at all. And, and that's one thing I talk to, to kids about. I'm like, if I had to do over, that's the one thing I would change. I would have traveled. In my 20s, I would have, I would have traveled around. I'd, you don't know how life would have changed out, you know, turned out or changed. But I think that's the one thing, you know, like, like if you could go to Aspen and bartend for the winter, That'd probably be a pretty cool gig. Oh, yeah. And then go wherever, you know, Austin, Texas, and do something spring and summer, you know. I think you get to meet new people, bring in new cultures. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, talk to me about the culture in the barbershop. <laughs> Bro, it was crazy the first time I went in the Empire. Oh. And... <laughs> They're just steady busting balls with yeah, each other. Yeah, we don't let up on each other. It's, I mean, <laughs> it was fun. I was laughing and smiling the whole time I was in there. There's um, we push the limit, and I think we intentionally do it because there's so much stuff going on when it regards to politics and culture oh, yeah. and races, and you have a melting pot of everyone at the barber shop. We're not just one way. We're not just all straight hair, all curly hair, all black, all white, all Asian, all Hispanic. We're for everyone. So if there's something that hits the news, we're going to bring it out there and we're going to put it into a light of this is how I feel. But it might not be how I feel. We're going to take it to that extreme because that's how people think. And we're going to put a spin on it. So that way it's just like. It's for everyone. <laughs> yeah, I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago with an artist friend of mine, and she's in a uh, interracial relationship. So we had we talked a lot about race. I got a buddy of mine. He and I talk about it a lot. It's heartbreaking, man. What's going on in this country? But I think it's the extreme ends is what yeah. we hear all the noise from, yeah. and it's not the, the the vast majority of people in the middle. And um, it, it seems like to me those because people aren't willing to have a conversation. I've got my mind made up. So this is the way it is no matter what. You've got your mind made up. And I've, what I've learned is all you got to do is have a conversation with people. And I'll give you an example of that. Um, I could not stand the term white privilege. I always associated white privilege with you got to own a business because you're white. Not because you worked your hind end off, but because you're white. And I'm having a conversation with a buddy of mine. And he's telling me that his 14-year-old son is going to his girlfriend's house, and he's got to explain to him what he can and cannot do in her neighborhood. And then it clicked with me. My daughter can go to the swimming pool and run through the backyards, and there's no problems. His 14-year-old son does that. Somebody may call the cops. There could be. Then it hit me, right? Then I understood that meaning, what it meant. It wasn't that you become successful because you're white, it's you don't have to deal with some of the BS that I have to deal with. You're not followed around CVS or whatever because you're white, and I got to deal with that because I'm a man of color. And what I, what I found out was having that conversation completely changed my perspective on that, and now I get it. Um, but I think that's the problem is you get too many people that get balled up and it's, this is the only way I see it. I'm not willing to do anything else. So yeah, man, being able to cut up and bring it to life and just have conversations means it's the only way you're going to move forward yeah. and, and do anything is, 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 you know, kind of just talk about it. 
I also want to piggyback on that white privilege statement sure. because all but so many times, like having lived in Memphis and seen what it is right in your face. And I'm not talking about just white, white privilege. I'm just talking about people make excuses for like there's African-American men that get or, like get or they get picked up, locked up. And it's like, well, he comes from a single parent home and his parents were on drugs and this and that. And me sitting here. I come from a single parent home. Me too. My dad's a crackhead on the south side of Chicago. What's my excuse for taking a straight and narrow? So it's almost like you you know it's there, but you don't use that as your excuse for why you're either going to succeed and or fail. Right. You just know. I think to me those statements are just ignorance and people's insecurities about what because I my life like I was raised poor like me and my mom were in, like in the back of a Cadillac till six and so it's just like seeing that and then she still went to school still got her master's degree and just I think we're all products of people we're around you are 100 percent so I, I talk to people about when my life changed and I call it my circle of influence um and my life changed when I changed the people I surrounded myself with back when I was hanging out with People in the projects when I lived in the projects and that kind of stuff. That's the influence you have. And, and they couldn't get their self out. So they definitely couldn't help you get out. Right. And when I moved down here, you know, fortunately my wife was waiting tables, working two or three jobs and allowed me to try to find the career path. And I found a mentor and a mentor changed my life completely. Um, and I see it in your industry with apprenticeships and that kind of stuff. But a mentor brought me under, taught me how to make decisions and introduced me to, to his circle. Uh, and then I learned how to run a business and, and that kind of stuff. But it was absolutely who I surrounded myself with. And now I take it a step further because of social. And I think it's also what you surround yourself that's, with. That's the key, yeah. So like I'd go to the gym and I'd go to the gym of a morning and I'd put headphones on, be on the treadmill and I'm listening to motivational stuff. That's how I'm going to start my day off. Or I could read a bunch of hate and a bunch of garbage and a bunch of complaining and start your day off like that. And I, I, I'm a firm believer that if you consume hate online, you're going to be hateful and you have hate in your heart. Mm -hmm. And if you consume positive stuff and surround yourself with positive people, you're going to be positive or more positive at least than if you didn't. And and it's simple. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's simple. Um, but that for me, that's what it took. And like, again, a whole lot of this, man, just talking to people and, and learning and, and that kind of stuff has really changed the, the way I am. And then, you know, and as I've gotten older, I've wanted to become more and more selfless, you know, whether it's volunteering, like you were talking about earlier, um, doing donations or, you know, um, giving gifts to, to, to underprivileged kids at Christmas, that kind of stuff. Cause that's what I had to do. Like I was on the, uh, the angel tree, um, in high school and was terrified that a kid from school was going to recognize the sweater that I got from the angel tree and make fun of me because that's what their mom or dad bought. The odds of that happening are slim to none. <laughs> but I was just, I was, you know, it just freaked me out because I didn't want people to know I was poor. Mm. And, and I see the same thing when I take these uh, young people out Christmas shopping or whatever. It's the exact same thing is I want a pair of Jordans. Because I don't have any. I've been picked on. It's a status symbol. I want Jordans. And so, I mean, so we'll go buy Jordans and I get it too because I was the exact same way. Like I wrote a blog recently about at Christmas time about don't be ashamed of your circumstances. When I was 14 ish, I think we're living in the projects. My mother had no money. We're paying $50 a month for rent. Everybody's selling their food stamps, 50 cents on them. We were flat broke driving $500 cars. And, um, she went to the dollar store and bought boxes of chocolate covered cherries. I don't remember how many she wraps these things. Then we take her car and we go drive through Southwest Virginia, passing these out to her friends. And I was. So ashamed. Cause so I'm like, they suck, man. They're freaking cherries. They're 99 cents. You know, the, the, I was ashamed because it said we're poor, right? That, that was my thinking there. And as I've grown up, I realized that, that they weren't 99 cent boxes of cherries. They were gifts of love. 
but it took me growing up to realize that kind of stuff. Um, so, man, I've done a lot of reflecting and, 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 and just growing here recently. And, and that's come from bringing other people into my life and, and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, man, I'm with you. I grew up for one stretch. You know, my mom always worked. Um, and in one stretch, she, uh, she couldn't get work, ends up moving welfare, food stamps, all that stuff into the projects. And, um, but while she was doing that, she went to school to become a nurse. Um, did that and got her life straightened out. And it was, uh, it was, it was, it was a good learning experience. It just like you, I'm sure it, you know, it, it kind of paved the way for the way I think and believe and, and watch it. And I think sure. it builds character, right? Oh, yeah. You, you can get kicked in the teeth. You oh, were raised kicked in the teeth, yep. right? From the gate. That's right. From so you, the gate. So you can take it. I mean, you know what to expect. That's why I said, like, starting over in a big deal to me, man. I've lived in two houses for the last 12 years. And that takes me back to 31 years old. I've lived in 40 houses total. So for the first 31 years of my life, I lived in at least 38 different places. And these were places I could just rattle off. I'm sure there was some in there I forgot about or didn't know or whatever. So, I mean, we packed up and moved all the time. So starting over for, for me is is easy. But my daughter, I don't want to put her through it. You know, that, that's that. that's the big thing for me is I don't want her changing schools. I don't want her doing any of that kind of stuff because it was a, not, not a bad experience, but I just had a hard – Hard time making friends because you just you're there for three months and then you're gone somewhere else and now you're the new guy again yep. and you know that sucks and you're having to keep rebuilding that friendship circle yeah. over and over it makes it hard to develop real long lasting kind of relationships and then sometimes you develop trust issues because of it because you never know here today gone tomorrow kind of thing yeah you've got that and then the other thing with just the education system is you you leave and you're here you could go somewhere else and they could be way up here yep. they could be way down here I mean it's never just a straight you, you know you're not That's you're, you're not moving straight across talk to me about um we'd mentioned you'd mentioned to me out in the parking lot about or out in the driveway about sponsors and that kind of stuff like like and the reason I want to talk about it is because I don't think people realize, at least parents, don't realize that you could make a living out of doing what we're doing. You can make a living on Instagram. You can, yes. you can, you can. So, so talk, and I found you on Instagram. So talk to me about the sponsorships you were telling me about. So young people kind of understand how that worked, how they came about, what you're doing. So. Instagram has their algorithms. So certain things pop up in your feed. I pop into people's feeds and um, you build your following off of that. And the more and more you get followers off of that, people start to watch you. They start to follow you. And then you just happen to wake up one morning and there's an inbox message of somebody asking you, hey, we're going to send you our product. Do you want to try it out? And you do a video. I legit am just fresh from a shoot for two of these things that I have to do for this week. And um so I'm going to be shooting them out and I don't expect much out of anything. But if anybody gives me something, I'm going to put them on. I use my platform for whatever I support. Um, if you empower me, you empower my haircuts, you empower how I style my 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 my, um, my, my uh, guys up that I'm going to support you as well because you support me. And uh, so there's Shiro Shears is a new shear company. They've been around forever in three days, but um, they reached out to me and sent me some wonderful scissors and I've been cutting with it. You've got to experience them as well. Um, and I did a haircutting tutorial this morning on that. And then Black Solutions sent me a, a whole bunch of products, pomades, curl twist gels and stuff that I use on another shoot that I'm going to be using on that. And so when you do these posts, um, sometimes the companies will pay you by per follower you have. Sometimes there's a flat rate of how much they pay you per post. Um, but generally, so... I'm not anywhere near where there are other people are at right now. Right. And I'm constantly growing. But with just a little 15K that I do have, I've been able to reach a lot of different brands. But I'm more so specific about my following. So when I feel like I have too many bots that are on there because you get a lot of fake accounts, I'll go through and clear mine out. Like last year, I was up to 17,000 and come to find out 3,000 were bots. So I flushed them out, deleted them completely because I like an authentic audience. Right. But even like that, and, and and look, 15K is a ton. I don't want to discount it, but 
it's not a huge, huge following, right? When we start looking at Kardashian stuff, right. Joe Rogan's of the world. I mean, but it, my point is it doesn't take a massive following. You don't need tens of hundreds of thousands of people nope, to start getting these opportunities. Message. You just got to have a message. A message in the audience. That's like I, I started following a young lady, and she's probably got about as many as you do. She's doing stuff for Dove, Gillette. I mean, it's not, you don't have to have a massive audience. For me, I think the key for social media is you have to be authentic. You can't, I couldn't copy you and expect the same returns that you're getting, right? You, you have to be authentic and you just have to be patient. You have to grow that, that audience um, because that's what they're coming for. I, I tell a story about, Ten years ago, my wife and I are in Gatlinburg, and I had an idea that I wanted to approach companies, large corporations, and get them to sponsor my life. And what I wanted to do was travel the country with my daughter when she was born. And like when it's time to go learn about Gettysburg, let's go to Gettysburg. When it's time to learn about the Grand Canyon, let's go to the Grand Canyon. That was 10 years ago before vlogging was a thing. That's that's what it was. It was today's travel vlog is mm -hmm. what I wanted to do. The concept, the idea was right and probably a little bit ahead of its time. The path was wrong. I should have went and done it. Then you get the audience. Mm -hmm. Then the sponsorship opportunities come in. Um, but back then, I mean, it was all fresh and new and, and none of that stuff was happening. But today, like I, do, I follow so many different just – Unique stuff on on YouTube is my big social thing, and these people that are traveling, that are they're, they're living their dreams, doing whatever because of these opportunities of taking that leap first, and then getting some kind of sponsorship. You don't know where it turns into. Right. I mean, this thing you did today could turn into somebody seeing it, some other sponsors coming in, your following growing. Mm -hmm. So then the following grows. It's kind of self fulfilling prophecy. Somebody sees this the. The Shear Company shares it. They see it. They start following you. Now you go from fifteen to twenty k. Now somebody else comes in. And say, I mean, it's 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 amazing the opportunities that are out there, and I'm blown away by it. But even like my wife doesn't get it. Like she she gets nervous because she's like, you got to charge people. I say that's not the way it works. You've got to put out content that is valuable. You have to build an audience, and then it'll come. When it really hit me, I was watching a. Uh, video with Gary Vaynerchuk. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know who Gary V is. And he was talking about L'Oreal, the makeup people, spending like $750 million a year on print advertising, and they were losing the market share for, I don't know, I'm going to say 16 to 26-year-olds. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. So I immediately stopped the video, opened up another tab, go to YouTube, type in makeup tutorial, and there's this beautiful young lady that's doing makeup, and she's got 3 million subscribers. And then it hit me and her videos have, I don't know, 10 million views. And it hit me right then that L'Oreal could pay this girl half a million a year. It's more money than she ever thought she was going to make and reach the audience that they're losing. The other thing where I think the real opportunity right now is, is people that don't have a huge following. So you get somebody that comes in and locks you down under a contract. Mm -hmm. They help you grow from 15 to 150. But they're still paying you 15k money, right? But they've got you under contract. But I can also appreciate the people that jump in earlier and it's like, hey man, we're gonna give you a shot. So it's it's and that's the whole goal for you know all this stuff. But it's it's crazy the amount of work it takes. Even this, man. Like I love talking to people, but then however long this goes, the edit takes as long because you gotta watch <laughs> through it. Then you gotta upload it, you gotta you gotta put it out on every piece of social to try to get some following. And and I know the process and I get so frustrated because it's not growing as fast as I want it to. We finally hit today on YouTube 100 subscribers. Like that milestone was huge for me, mm. but it's absolutely nothing, right? I mean, it's it's nothing whatsoever, but we're going to do some targeting advertising and that kind of stuff to try to grow that business. Going to a huge trade show in a couple of weeks to try to grow that business. Um, we'll go to VidCon in July, but I really enjoy it. just want to go meet new people, man. That's, again, that's why I ask you to come be part of this. So the sponsorship deals you've got, since I went off on that tangent, are they are they 
Did they just send you product to use? Yes. So that that's it right so now. So the Black Solutions just sent me product. Shiro Shears, we are in talks of doing training and revamping their educational curriculum right now. They um, The scissor market kind of got flooded. There's other competitors out there. I've worked with some other competitors. But somehow they got lost in translation with the buildup of the educational platform. And they're trying to relaunch that. So... It's flying by the seat of my pants. But again, you don't know where this ends up, right? <laughs> I have right? no clue, man. I mean, it could be. I who love knows the what? journey. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, and you have to. And you have to learn, love the journey and the process. And it's, but again, it's being patient, right? Oh, you yeah. just, you start. Which missed me at birth, too, by the way, because I'm not a patient person. It, it's hard. By no means. Nobody <laughs> wants to be patient. They want it. And I'm not even talking like instant gratification. It's we just want to go and, and I mean, especially people that have any entrepreneurial stuff in them at all. It's I want to create. I want to grow. It's not fat. You're never you're never satisfied with where it is. Right. It's just I want I want to grow and not not not. And for me, it's not even monetarily. I just want to build stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, like I can't wait till five years down the road and we've got a thousand podcasts put up and whatever the subscribers are. I don't know where that ends up, but it, it's I, I can't wait to get to that point. Um, and, and I've called myself trying to bypass it, um, but you can't you can't bypass. You can't skip steps in the process. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think for me, too, was like that mother cutter came about last year. I've I've had the name forever as a as a second page. I went under Brandon Anderson hair for the longest. That got me nowhere. I switched to that mother cutter and it was like It's a great name. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's a fantastic name. <laughs> Thank you. And then it was like I sw- I did a switch to that and my following it was like who? What? And I was surprised nobody else took the name for a long time. I'm like you would figure they got everything underneath the sun so yeah. that should have been taken but I was blessed enough to have it and I'm like I switched over to that didn't change my account or nothing just swapped the names and my following I think that that night that I did it, I gained two thousand followers overnight. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. Well, you were share, you were telling me too that that you were sharing some of the stuff from with your friends, and they're ending up with more subs than you are, more followers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll put somebody on my Facebook or on my IG page, and they'll get more followings than I will off. And I'm like, <laughs> I use my platform from everyone. Yeah. Like if it helps you, it helps you. Yeah. I'm just. Especially for my clients, because I'm always about it. Like, I have two of my clients have now linked up. One's an upcoming artist. The other one is my videographer. And he did my videos today. Well, they linked up together down in Surfside and shot his music video. Like, that's the stuff I love to see. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like I, I had a, a videographer I hired to, to um, video me at a couple schools doing a speech. And um, he comes from Columbia two days in a row. He drives back and forth each day. But when I decided I wanted to start a podcast, I had no idea about cameras, microphones, this. I had no idea. So I sent, I met him at that point for two days. Uh, we spent a few hours together. I sent him an email. I'm like, hey, man, I'm trying to do this. Can you help me out? 30 minutes later, he sends me a note. like, here's the shopping cart. This is everything you need. Go get started. You know, complete stranger. <laughs> But you just, I just asked for help. And that's one thing that I've gotten better at over time is asking people for help, asking you to come do this. Because, I mean, really, I mean, your following is way bigger than mine. I've got way more upside potential of this conversation than you do. But what I've, I've reached out to people, I'm like, look, there's nothing in it for you. Here's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to bring resources to young people that if, if somebody wants to become a barber, that here's a video you can watch. Um, and so they kind of got to be on on board with that mission until we grow. And then now there's some value, at least reciprocal value for that. So with that, if, if a young person wanted to become a barber, I mean, I know there there's apprenticeships. I mean, what, so what's the steps? Is it is it beauty school? I mean, is there is there different ways to you do can, this? There's so many paths to get into the industry. Um, apprenticeships down in the state of South Carolina. There aren't many of the barbering schools, so so going through an apprentice, like I have my instructor's license, so I can take under two people underneath my license and train them for for a year, and then they become licensed. Um, I went to formal school. I went to beauty school first, and I went to barbering school second. Um, So you can take those routes. Uh, Just really depends on what you want. At the end of the day, all things lead to state boards, so you're going to have to be taught the way to do state boards. 
Um, and I also say this right here. If you're looking to make money in barbering right away, don't do it because you're going to be broke. Yeah. You're going to be broke. But it goes back to the process, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you can make plenty of money barbering. Oh, yes, you can. I'm sh Just like oh, yes, tattooing and everything else. Because, again, it's an art. I'm sure you can make plenty of money in it. If you get into something because of money, it's too easy to quit because the money takes too long to get there. If you do it because you love the culture, you love cutting hair, you love doing whatever it is, then you stick around because the money's not as important. Right. That's the way I look at everything is if you get into anything, if you make a decision based on I'm going to go be an ex because I can make more money, it's just too hard, man. I mean, the money takes forever to, to, to get there. Even this, you know, I mean, it's a lot of work. I'm up to midnight every night editing videos and trying to find new people to keep the funnel full. It's a lot of work for zero money coming in, but I'm not doing it for money. I'm doing it to, to try to find one kid that wants to be a barber that I can send a video to oh, yeah. and they can listen to you talk about. That's the why. So if that never changes... Then it's not about money. It's about finding new people and new stories. Um, with um, the apprenticeship, so I'm thinking about like, and I don't know how expensive barber school is or beauty school, but I mean, if a kid was grew up poor like we did, I mean, I mean, you could start off with an apprenticeship. Just I was watching a video last night, of Gary Vaynerchuk. He says you got three things: you've either got money, talent, or time. If you don't have money or talent, then you got all the time. You, <laughs> you can go right. sweep the shop. Right. You can do whatever right. and just. And just learn that way. Um, it's so you have to find that person that speaks to you. Somebody has to ignite you, ignite that flame, or you already have to have that flame, but somebody has to charge that up. Right. Um, whether it be myself, or you come down, we got nine freaking barbers on hand at all times. You might like something that Spider does or something that Ant does better than I do, and that might be your main interest. Ask them, hey, you mind if I stand here and actually kind of watch this haircut? If that barber tells you no, they're not, they're only doing That's it for right. the money. Go, go find, go find another one. Like, we're all here. I want everybody to win. I want the next freaking barbers to be better than I'm doing right now because that keeps me charged to keep doing what I'm doing right I, now to be better. I, bro, so, I tell people mm -hmm. all the time. No is part of the process. If, if I go to someone and they tell me no, you're one of 320, 330 million people in this country. I'll go find somebody. I'll find that yes. And and I, I, I think that that's something that's lacking is they're told no. I walk in, hey, man, can I print this under you? We don't have a relationship. There's no, there's no anything. No, I don't really have spot for anybody. Well, I can't do it. I was told no. Just find the next guy and the next guy. Bring some other value. Don't just hit with, the, hey, what's in it for me? I can hang out. I can sweep. I can clean. I can do anything. Man. I, I was want about to, to say, to, like, like, like for me, the easiest way, and I say this with all things that revolve around the barbershop, you come in and you want this here, grab the broom. You will learn more from sweeping hair than you will from behind the chair. That's how I started off, too. Yeah. Sweeping hair. Sweeping hair. Like, I'm not, I always feel like this here. I've been mentored by some of the best. And, like, it came from me just voluntarily humbling myself down. Yes, I was licensed the whole shebang, but I'm going to grab that broom because if I want to learn from this guy, let me at least sweep his hair to make his life that much easier. And it's part of it's part of paying dues, right? Yes, I mean, yes, you sir. Just, so so would, how important were the people that mentored you? Oh, God, Robert, Eric, Lou back in Nashville. I can't. Had it not been for them coming in my life, I don't think I'd be in this chair being able to talk to you right now. I can promise you, if it wasn't for my mentor, we wouldn't be in this chair talking Word together up. right now. Like, I mean, I, 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 and I still don't know what my mentor saw in me. I still tell, I was like, I don't know. I'm glad he, whatever it was he saw. And I, and it was just, I think it was really hard work. I was willing to put in the time, put in the work. I was honest. You know, he could count on me. And that's where it was. And then he took me under his wing and taught me how to, to run a business, make decisions, that kind of stuff. But a mentor, man, I mean, if, especially for young people that were poor, that aren't going to go to school, my path to success for them is to find a mentor in something you love, something that you're willing to sacrifice to get there. And that sacrifice may be internships. It may be working for free. It may be sweeping hair. It may be whatever. 
You're 19, man. You got a lifetime in front of you. So suck it up for a few months and 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 sweep hair, or, you know, whatever it is. But but let that mentor know that that this is what you want. You're willing to do whatever it takes to get there. I think people see that, they appreciate it, and they recognize it. And they're like, I'm willing to give this kid a shot. Yep. I uh I was talking at a school recently, and a young lady raised her hand and said, I'm probably not going to school and everybody asks for a minimum two-year degree. What should I do? I was like, you have to sell yourself. You have to be on top of things. You have to follow up. You have to let this person know that you're the better decision than the person with the two-year degree. And again, that could be offering to work for free. It could be, I'm willing to do it for free so you know you're making a good investment. It could be anything like that, but just make that sacrifice. It's such a small part of the whole either life or that process. It's such a small part and will pay dividends forever. Oh, yeah. And it'll appreciate it. And now it, it could take it could elevate you in the next step because they appreciate it. And now they're, they're willing to be a mentor. I love trying to help other people. You know, I uh, I was uh, I talk about it a lot on here because I'm always talking to new people. But when I started finding a little bit of success and become a partner in the company that I was with, I wanted to kind of give back and and help others. So I reached out to a friend of mine offering a mentor. Um, their daughter because she was into to makeup, big glamorous makeup. And someone had said something to her because I saw on her mother's Facebook, mama, am I hideous or whatever? So I reached out and said, Hey, I, I, I want to help your daughter. I won't give her any money, but if, if she wants, you know, I'll help with the social media strategy. You're into makeup. That's what Instagram's for. And, um, that whole deal falls apart. I go to Sox City High School. I'm telling the story. And a young girl comes up after her. She's like, Miss Johnson, I want to be a, a makeup artist as well. Can you help me? I'm like, look, here's what I'm doing. I'm going to go get a massage after this. It's a, it's a full-blown salon. They do makeup and hair. They got stylists. I'll ask if you could intern or shadow. And I go through that process. It takes a little bit of time, but we get it worked out. And she sends me a Christmas card. It says something to the effect of, Thank you for sharing. You'll never know the effect you had on my life. And I'm like, all I did was ask one person one question. Um, I was telling that story the other night, and a young man's like, yeah, but what you did was you planted a seed. That's it. You That's planted it. a seed. Now the seed's growing. And when I started thinking about it like that, then it started making sense. And he's like, and again, same kind of thing we're talking about. He's like, we just got to keep planting those seeds. You know, you you plant the seeds of positivity. You plant the seeds of love. You don't you don't water those seeds of hate and that kind of stuff. And when he broke it down for me like that, I was like, that makes so much sense to me now. Is it wasn't doing the minimum; it was planting a seed. Um, so, which again comes from just talking to people. But that kind of stuff, man. When I get that that kind of stuff, I don't feel like I deserve it. You know. But it's it's been a lot of fun. So I'm always trying to to help and encourage young people to go chase your dreams, man. Whatever that is, find somebody to help you get there. There's people that'll help. And just like you said, if you run into somebody and they said they're not they're not willing to help, that's the wrong person. You Very don't wrong. want their help anyways. Yep. Go keep digging and keep scrounging. You find that that right person, and um, it, it'll turn into a lifelong relationship. I like to. Um well, one of the biggest things I like to do, too, right now is kids. Like, we got to keep encouraging our youth. So, like, if I find out that a gentleman might have, like, a 2.3, okay, I'll ask him and say, what will it take for you to get that up to a 3.0? Not asking for money. I'm not asking for a 4.0. This is a real life story that happened. My, my, my guy had a 2.38 thing. And I told him, I said, you bring me at least a 325, I will cut your hair for free. The man slapped me in the face with a 4.0. One free haircut. That's that seed, right? You just got to <laughs> put something out there for him. If it changes, man, like, plus kids are impressionable. You never know the kid that you might be raising, the kid you walk down the street, might be your next president. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what you gave was time, Right. I mean, whatever, an hour, 40, whatever it took, you gave time. I also tell a story about during the hurricane, the uh, 
school puts out a note saying that they're trying to make um, a thousand bag lunches because so many kids only get to eat lunch or eat, eat any day their food comes from school. There's no food in the home. And um, my wife and I talk about it. We're like, well, let's go load up a trailer full of stuff. So we go to the bank, get some cash out, go to Sam's. We load up, a tra- I mean, 1,600 juice boxes and like 500 bags of chips and 500 bags of cookies and bread. I mean, just gobs and gobs of stuff. We go down and we're unloading the, the trailer and the principal's thanking us and thanking us. And, I, and again, I told her, I was like, we, we did the minimum. The people that really deserve any credit are the people that are in there making 1,500 sandwiches that are going to deliver 1,500 bag lunches. Time is so much more precious than – now, you could have told the same young man that you get – you raise it up, I'll give you 20 bucks. It's come and gone. Like you said, now you've left an impression on this person. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. And now he comes in every haircut. I get to see his grades. Yeah. Like we just went from a 68% to now my boy's got a 92%. Right. So, it's, I, so it's every aspect of his life I want to be involved in as long as he lets me. Right. But, <laughs> but even with that, it's now he's doing this. It's not for him anymore. He can't let you down. Sorry. Right. Like that's with my mentor. Whenever we were in business, that's my biggest fear is letting that man down. I do not want to disappoint him um, through my decisions, whatever it is. Even we're, 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 we sold our business. So technically, I guess we're not business partners anymore. But I still, even moving forward, I, I do not want to disappoint him um, because of the impact he had on my life. And it could be as simple as encouraging somebody to get better grades. It could yeah, I, I love it, man. I love when when people. I uh, I went and did a career day at, in Conway, and um, I'm going around the room. I was like, "What do you want to be? What do you want to be? What do you want to be?" And I'm talking to people, and they're like, "One one person said they wanted to be a chef," and I'm like, "If if I was your age and I wanted to be a chef, what I would do is I would get on YouTube and learn how to cook, and I'd find a chef on YouTube that I loved, and I would recreate." their recipes on film, like you said earlier. And I would create an online resume. I'd Mm -hmm. build my portfolio. I don't know. These kids were in middle school. You're 12 years old. Over the next six years, you could have an amazing thing. And I'd be sharing it. I'd be reaching out to the Gordon Ramsays and all this. I I mean, that's I would put in that work. And I'm going around the room, and I get to one young lady. It's like, and what do you want to do? She's like, I want to own a wolf sanctuary. Bro, I'm like, (laughs) I ain't got nothing for you on the wolf sanctuary. But you go find somebody that can help you do that. And I get a card from her. I actually put it on my, uh, I think, my Facebook page. But I, I got a card from her, and she had drawn a wolf head. And she's like, Mr. Johnson, thank you for sharing. Um, I'm going to do my very best to own a wolf sanctuary. And I just, to me, that's just the greatest stuff, man. I love getting that kind of stuff back from kids. And hopefully, because you know, I, I finally went and started a website to where I can interact with people and, and, and the comments through this kind of stuff. I'm hoping that there'll be somebody that I get the opportunity, like you're talking about, to where you can follow them throughout um, their their life, their career, as long as they're willing to, to let you be part of it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So what else is going on? What's next for you? What's next for me? Let's see. Um, working. That's it. I'm always trying to work, trying to work, trying to spread the brand awareness. Um, just trying to put out good energy. Yeah. Like uh, this past weekend, had to go out. Got a bunch of college kids due to our location right by Coastal. So I got a bunch of my frat guys. Um, They've been inviting me out for over a year to come out to hang and try to party with them and stuff. And I was finally like, you know what? Sure, I'm going to go with you. And I didn't realize, like, doing that one little gesture of just coming out after work. Because, you know, like, Thursdays and Fridays, I'm at work sometimes from 7.30 a.m. to 10.30 at night. So so I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put myself on a little time frame. I'm going to leave at 11 o'clock. I didn't leave out there till 3 o'clock in the morning. But it was because of that is now I'm walking into work this week with a complete book because I went out of my way to just drink with these guys. Yeah. Which is not a big issue. And I'm like, I love hanging out with people. I love meeting new people. Well, I love what you said about putting out good energy. That's been such a, I refuse to be negative. I am not going to do it. I'm not going to bring it into my life. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to get involved with racist crap and political crap. I delete that. I don't want to see this anymore. I just, I get rid of it. I can't believe that there's people that go out of their way 
to make memes and stuff like that about stuff they hate to post it on Instagram. Why why would you why would you put any energy and effort into something you can't stand just to start fighting on the internet? I don't I don't get it, man. You know, having kids and stuff, any kind of attention, whether it be positive and or negative, they want attention. And like I've always like I'm very based in my spirituality. So it's like the power of the tongue can either breathe life and or death. It's how we choose to use our mouths. I'm not going to, I ain't going to breathe life to that. I, mm-hmm. I started, I saw something on Instagram this weekend and I come so cl- I mean, I was typing and I'm like, nah, I'm not even getting involved in this stuff because I'm trying to build a brand mm-hmm. and I don't need this to turn negative and get involved. Like I posted on a YouTube channel the other day, somebody I've been listening to motivational stuff. There's a channel called Your World Within and uh, the guy that runs his name's Eddie and he's got an amazing voice and he, he does speak it, speeches. He's a public speaker, very motivational. And I had commented on one of his videos. I love what you're doing. I've, I use, I listen to you all the time. You know, I'm trying to build my channel. I'd love to have you do the podcast one day. And then a comment pops up to my comment is nothing personal. Keep your day job seriously. So you got two options here or three, I guess. You don't have to respond. You can respond positively or you could respond negatively. And I was, it, I, so I, I'm thinking about, it, I'm like, why is there somebody on a motivational page? Spread negativity. I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. So I just respond with, I appreciate the feedback. Why don't you come and do an episode with me? I'll come to you. You've probably got a story that will be encouraging for some young person. Of course, he never responds. But Eddie responds with, no problem. I'd love to do an episode with you. So that opened up an opportunity for me to go do an episode with somebody that's got almost 200,000 YouTube subscribers. But it, but it just, it, I refuse to go negative in that situation. It's too easy. There's no reason to. I mean, why do it? Why, why? I don't know, man. I just, I don't get negative stuff. I found myself, I can post a haircut up. I'll get a bunch of likes and then I'll get comments from people. I don't think that's what the internet doesn't train you for is that you're supposed to be like people think I'm going to post it. I'm going to get number love. Then you start to read the comments and people start to show a lot of hate in it. And it's just like their opinion. Everybody is entitled to have one, but I'm entitled to not react to how you respond to me. Right. Oh my gosh. What was it? I was just talking to somebody the other day or, but that, that was what it was, is it's about your reaction. It's how you react. It's not, it's not what, but how your reaction is to negativity, uh, whether it's choosing to ignore it, whether it's responding negatively, responding positively, it, it's your reaction. So that was, that makes, a ton of sense to me with how you're at, but, and it's unfortunate, you know, I mean, I'm sure you were raised the same way by, by your single mother. Like I was is if you got nothing nice, they don't see anything at all. Right. <laughs> it's, just, it's too easy. Yeah. I mean, it's too easy. If you, if you don't like some of my posts, if you don't like some I've said, just keep scrolling, keep scrolling. <laughs> like life is too short, <laughs> but, but I've never understood that either with, with people that complain about music or what's on tele. Don't watch it. Don't listen to it. It's not for you. Who cares? Just why? I'm like, I don't, I don't get whatever. You, you, you don't like some kind of music and you want to write a letter or an email to the record company to complain about something that you, it's not for you anyways. Why? why? I mean, I don't know, man. It's just, it's bizarre to me. Cause the world they got too we, much time on their hands. It's bizarre to me. <laughs> the world, the world we live in right now with that kind of stuff. So you're, um, your mother cut her brand. How long have you been building that thing? Since last October. Oh, really? So it's new. I mean, you got hats. And- yeah. Thanks to Liddy Brand. They are on Instagram. They ran out of Coastal. A few of my clients, they started up their business. I support those that always support me. Yeah. We'll never stop that. That's because I think people feel like you build up these platforms and you lose that human connection. And a lot of people can vouch I'm probably the worst person to text back, but I always try to get back to everyone. Well, it's it's a challenge, you know, because I've been reaching out to a lot of people. And a lot of people, when you start looking at, at social media followers, subscribers, light years ahead of where I am. And 
like I mean, I, like I follow a guy on YouTube that does car reviews, Doug DeMuro. He's probably got three million subscribers. I'm shooting him notes and stuff like that. There's no response, but he's probably getting 500 emails a day. You know, or you at mention somebody on Twitter or whatever. They're probably getting 500. At, there's just not enough time in the day. But I, I, but I thought a lot about exactly what you're talking about is you always want to respond. But at some point, at some level of success, you just you run out. You know, you just run out of time. And it's not deliberate. It's not that you think you're better than people. It's just, it's math. There's just not enough time left. That's true. Yeah. Because if you have to reply to everything, there's only certain numbers in 24 hours a day that you can do. And if I had to reply to every message, yeah. I'd spend half my life looking down. And yeah, not, just, look, just doing it's just, that. It's not physical. Well, it's not humanly possible. So you selling the hats and all that kind of stuff? Or you I just- have another batch coming. The hats will be up for sale here coming soon. I'm actually probably not going to, I don't like really selling like I feel like my brand is for everyone yeah come sit in my chair just like I give more than I ever get I believe that everything comes full circle it, like it does I don't if anybody wants that if you if anybody that sees this podcast and they say I want one of his hats inbox me I will send you one I, have I, I want whole, one when they come out I will pay for it but I'll rock it doing doing podcasts but I, I definitely, I definitely, I definitely want to I definitely get, get you one up. They should be in, I think, two weeks, we said, for this next yeah. order. And it's local people from Coastal that's doing yes, what you sir, said? Yes, sir, brother. Yeah. Yes, sir. Good, man. Local people supporting local. Got to, man. You have to. And and it's it's a challenge because everybody gets so consumed on on price. And it's easy. You know, it's it's like if, if I wanted to go have a book published local, I'd have no idea where to even go. So, I mean, it, it's easy to just get online and do that. But anything that I could ever support locally, because our business is 100% local, you know, our, our two-way radio business, video surveillance. I mean, it's every hotel, motel up and down the, the street. So, and I, so I, I take it personal when people don't support local, you know, we're being, we're, we're being priced, um, held up against internet price. And I was like, but the internet doesn't come pick your stuff up and the internet doesn't take care of you. And the, now we can offer internet pricing, but you get internet service, but I mean, you can't do that either. So, uh, but I'm glad I got to meet you, man. It's, it's, I've had a lot of fun coming and sitting in your chair and thank you for doing this. I it, appreciate it means a lot, you having man. me. And I'll send anybody I can your way. I we'll appreciate just, it. We'll that. just keep this circle going. Always. Just supporting each other. Always. Well, thank you, buddy. Not a problem, boss. I appreciate you, yeah, man. man. You're welcome. That's-